Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. And today I wanna to get into whether or not GoToMe is the right platform in order to raise money for your business or for your startup. And also, if it is, how can you actually do that? I'm gonna demystify all of that. And on this channel, I talk about everything when it comes to crowdfunding. So I got started in the industry in 2012. I've educated in the past about GoFundMe, charity fundraising, nonprofit fundraising. I've also written books on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And really for me, this is passion, this is labor of love, and I want to deliver this information to you so you can raise money, you can smash your goals, and you can do it effectively in the shortest amount of time. So let's get into that in just a second. Okay, so this all kind of originated when, first of all, I wrote a book which is called Crowdfunding Personal Expenses. And the reason I did that is I feel like there's just not enough quality information out there when it comes to how to raise money on GoFundMe or how to even use some of these other platforms that are available to you that you might not even know about, right? So I was so frustrated. I was like, oh, we gotta get some quality information out there for the reader base. Um, you know, obviously I'm a writer, I'm a blogger. I started in the industry in 2012. And also I do YouTube and a podcast. And I was like, okay, so first of all, I condensed all of the information that I was able to accumulate from my own experience and understanding and also from understanding what's working for other people and to condense this into one slim volume, which is crowdfunding personal expenses. So you can check that out on Audible. I have an Audible version where I read it with my pizzazz and my passion, but also I have a paperback version if you're interested in that. But in terms of this topic, I think that this is actually one of the most important topics of this year. And the reason is that so many more people are looking to start businesses or they already have existing businesses and they're wondering, can I use GoFundMe in order to bring some additional cash or funding or to propel that business into the future, whether you've been hit by some not so great stuff related to the pandemic, or you're just looking to scale up your business and grow, or you wanna start it from scratch. I really wanna talk about it and get into the nitty gritty with today's video. The first thing I wanna do is to make this a little bit more real for you. So let's go through a couple of examples. So first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to go to gofundme.com. If you're following along with this training video, it'd be amazing. You don't have to, I'm gonna show you some of these examples on screen, but I want you to go to gofundme.com. I want you to just browse through a couple of the other people out there that are successfully raising money when it comes to the business category on GoFundMe. So just go there, browse through a couple of them, see what it is that you're doing and the types of causes, the types of photos that they're using, the types of wording that they're doing in the actual campaign, how much are they raising, get a real world idea of what is already working. These aren't like random people in the universe. You know, these, these aren't like people that don't exist. These are human beings with living in a real location with a real need, with a real ask. They're individuals with families and friends, social networks, etc. These are people in the real world, just like you and me. I know that's hard to believe, right? I'm actually real aside from this screen here, but go there and go and look at these. And I'll just kind of draw your attention to a few different examples. And I have to say, I really want you to view this almost as though you're like a physician, okay? And the reason why I'm saying physician is that like, sometimes when we talk about really bad tragedies and things that have happened, I'm not trying to kind of make this um, all about that. And I'm really trying to just get to the, the cutting edge marketing angles in the same way that a physician might have a cadaver on the table. They have to obviously view that body with respect or that person who's been deceased with the respect. However, they also have to be able to talk shop and talk about you know anatomy and that kind of stuff. So I'm really just focusing on the anatomy of these campaigns in this video. Um, we're not getting into you know, the horrific circumstances or the things that led to those campaigns. So first of all, let's look at Rebuild Our 29 Diner Together. So this campaign was able to attract more than a thousand donations on GoFundMe and also over 63,000 of a $100,000 goal. And you can kind of see what this campaign actually looks like. So John Wood and the 29 Diner have been a staple in this local community. Um, they've been obviously doing a great job. They have a really great customer base. And unfortunately, there's a massive kitchen fire, it looks like, and the kitchen also needed to be in need of repair. And because of this, the actual owners or the actual people running this campaign decided to put this up in GoFundMe so the the community could rally around this cause. So in this example, this person already runs an existing business in the physical location in a real world, and they're using the platform GoFundMe in order to get funding for a need because of an, an event that happened that maybe they didn't have insurance for, right? Or for whatever reason, they just didn't think to get that kind of insurance for the business. So the community, obviously they might value this local staple or this diner 
restaurant on the corner that they go to all the time and make memories with their children, right? Or with their friends. Uh, if they want that to exist and continue to exist, this person is saying, you know what, it means so much to me if you could help out with this. And so far they've been able to attract over $63,000 using that technique. So if you're an existing business, the first answer to this question is yes, you can use GoFundMe and yes, you can use it for a specific need. The second example that I would like to draw your attention to is an Apple repair shop, which unfortunately was robbed. And because of that, they reached out to their supporter base and was able to put together a GoFundMe campaign. So to read up through this, basically this Apple repair shop was robbed and damaged and they need support. Um, they've been able to raise over $21,000 of their $20,000 goal, about 128 donations. And I'm not gonna go through this entire story, but basically this is based in London Square, California. This unfortunate store was robbed Robbed, ransacked and vandalized three times in one week, which is insane. And we're not going to get into the politics of all of that, but I think that's insane that people are willing, that people are actually trashing their local community, particularly hardworking business owners that are trying to provide a service, a quality service for the community. Man, that just like shreds my heart apart, right? So th these people actually were able to put up a GoFundMe campaign. And in addition, they took, you can see here, uh, the inventory from the store, computer parts, 17 customers' laptops that have been brought in for service. So whoever did this or the group of people that did this just really did not care at all about the community. So this actual store owner or the people behind the store reached out to the local community. They put together a GoFundMe campaign on the platform and they're able to attract more than $21,000 in donations for this particular cause. This is another example of a business out there, an established business that due to some unfortunate event, which they also didn't have insurance for or didn't prepare for in any kind of meaningful way. And let's be honest, it's kind of hard to prepare for an event like that, right? They, they were able to reach out and able to actually recruit uh, and to actually get to their goal and go over their goal, which is 20K. So this is another successful example of how you can use GoFundMe in order to get funding for a cause. The third example that I would like to draw your attention to, and you'll notice obviously a recurring theme here, uh, has to do with Help Save AMP 4.0. Uh, so again, this campaign was able to attract more than $30,000 off of a $30,000 goal. One of the things you'll notice that's different about GoFundMe than some other platforms out there is that typically campaigns don't overfund too much with GoFundMe. That's some, uh, definitely a trend that I've noticed. Um, so you definitely want to set what it is that you actually need. But they will attract over uh, 100, uh, 199 donations. And kind of the reason behind this is that this individual is one of the owners of adaptive movement, parkour, free running, martial arts, aerial silk, and a nerf facility in New Britain, Connecticut. And unfortunately, due to some COVID related issues, they were not able to recover from the pandemic. And I think there were some issues that they had with their landlord. And because of that, they needed to go to the local community and were like, hey, if you guys want a, a fun place like this to exist, our business to continue to exist, and to be able to take your kids here, to be able to have you know, fun outings here, if this is something that you want to exist in the local community, we now need your help. And they reached out to the community. The community rallied around them clearly, and they're able to get to their $30,000 goal on GoFundMe to help support their business moving through difficult times. So let me go through rapid fire through a couple of questions because we've gone through a couple of examples. So first of all, is GoFundMe good for a startup company? Well, the answer to that is a little bit complicated. I'll give you two answers and one example, right? So first of all, is it good for a startup? When I think of a startup company, I'm usually thinking of a company that has not yet generated revenue, right? They're pre-revenue company, they maybe don't even know their products and services yet, and they really just don't have a very good grasp even of their business plan. So if you're kind of a very early stage startup company, the GoFundMe campaign would have to be for something specific, okay? So there are different ways you can raise money on GoFundMe besides business, it can be education. So I've seen people, for example, do a successful GoFundMe campaign around a coding bootcamp. So if this founder, for example, wanted to launch a new company, but they didn't know how to code or program, they could then raise money for education costs to be able to go to an accelerator program or to go to a coding program that's going to then be a springboard for their actual business. Another great example there is um, if this person, you know, has been really great in a local community and they've really um, built themselves up, let's just say they're a doctor or something like that, and they've, or they've gone through school and they've attained this really specialized set of skills and now they need a little bit of help getting started, but also they're gonna be giving back to the local community in some way with their services. That's another great example of when a GoFundMe campaign can work for a startup. The times when it usually doesn't work if there's no kind of emotional angle, you're not supporting the community in any way, it's not very a big need. It's not something that people can kind of wrap their heads around. It's really just you're asking for free money, right? And that kind of ask usually doesn't go over so well on GoFundMe. That would work better for some of the other platforms that I'm going to actually mention later in this video. 
The second question would be, does it work for a business? Does it work for an existing business? So probably the times when it's not gonna be a good fit for an existing business, if let's just say you're trying to raise money on GoFundMe to expand your operations, right? That kind of thinking, it just seems very callous, very like self-focused, very self-centered. People are like, why don't you just take the cash that you're generating and reinvest that in the business the way you should, right? And grow your business that way. So it tends to work well for an existing business, but there's some kind of a dire need or a circumstance has arrived that was beyond your controls that leads to, again, the business no longer being able to function in the way that it should. And in addition, the big one is that the local community or the people that are existing customers of the business will benefit in a very large way way or you know just their entire life like they like this kind of entertainment business or they enjoy this business being open if that person can convince that community that the only way we can move forward is really if we can rally around and support us through this very difficult time that's again i've shown you these examples when this can work really well for business so to really quickly clarify it's not going to work well if you don't have a dire need, if you're just trying to raise money to expand your business, it'd be better to bring on shareholders. It'd be better to get on investment. It'd be better to issue a loan or something like that. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. If you though have something horrific happen to the business, people value the business in the local community, this can actually be an opportunity for you to not only you know, have people supporting a GoFundMe campaign, but to bring the community closer. And I'm sure there are also some ways you can kind of thank that community, either that's with discounts or some kind of gifts or throwing a party even. There's some ways you can probably thank that local community for also rallying around you. But that would be my point when it comes to business. So again, I'm gonna introduce you to a couple of ways in which you are a business, you don't fall into those categories, how you can raise money using crowdfunding. But before we do, I want to draw your attention to one of the things I've been working so hard on, man. And I've really tried to coalesce all the tactics, all the techniques, and all the strategies that have been proven to work with GoFundMe and put them into one place. So I want you to write down two links that I think are gonna be super valuable for you if you are serious about doing a campaign and you don't wanna do a lot of trial and error, you kinda of wanna just follow a system that works, a machine that works to produce results. Listen up because that's what I'm about to mention to you right now. So the next thing that I have for you is really if you kind of want to level up the game and you're, you have a very big ask and you know this is going to be beyond just posting this once on Facebook, right? You have a legitimate ask, but you also know there's going to be coordination that goes into this campaign and you are aware of that. If that's for you, you definitely want to access something that's going to speed up this whole game. I mean, you want to get access to templates that are proven to work, workshops and worksheets that you can fill in that are kind of like fill in the blank nature, just kind of do it for you, honestly. And also the things that work when it comes to the email communications, all the outreach, and you can grab all of that, what I call the GoFundMe cash machine. So I really spent so much time putting together this training and techniques and tactics and things that I share there that I don't share anywhere else. If you are very serious about this, you should definitely check that out because that's literally gonna just be light speed and really light the fire underneath your campaign. And it's a lot less work than trying to just do this all yourself. So go and check out the GoFundMe cash machine as well down below. And again, that's more for advanced people that really Really want to hit the ground running, want to do this right, want to do it fast, you got to check that out. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrate today. Link in the description. That being said, what are some other options? Okay, so you, if you're a business owner or you're, you're doing a startup, what are some of the other ways in which you can use crowdfunding in order to accomplish those goals and achieve that result of raising money? First of all, I really invite you, go and check out some microfinancing or micro loan platforms like Kiva. So Kiva, I've actually been privileged enough to moderate a bunch of panels in New York City. I lived in New York City for six or seven years and I was, you know, built a great relationship there with, you know, people who were starting businesses in that city. And Kiva is an incredible resource for entrepreneurs in the United States and outside of the United States to get a micro loan for their business. And the way that it works is basically you introduce your Kiva campaign to your social network. They will, are able to invest a little bit into your business, then Kiva opens it up to their network and then their network actually invests. And this is basically a micro loan, a no interest loan that you pay back over time. And again, like I said, it's no interest. And you have to look into the specifics there as well because it kind of varies from place to place. But that's kind of the broad uh, high level view if you want to. So this is great if you're trying to get like 10K, 5K, something like that, just to kind of get some startup capital in there. And it's a really kind of easy way in order to get started, particularly if you are having difficulty finding credit. 
The second way is bootstrapping. And that's kind of how I got started, man. Like I got started with my business literally in my dorm room, right? I had absolutely no money. For me, a lot of money was spending like $2 on dollar pizza, right? To get two slices. And that was like a big expenditure for me back then. So I really started my business by bootstrapping. And by bootstrapping, I basically mean working super hard, um, using credit cards, really managing, being very stingy with my money and growing it over time. And just being willing to plow into that thing, work hard and bootstrap and do what whatever I have to in order to get to the next level. Now, I'll be honest, that is a lot of work, my friend. So bootstrapping is definitely one of those options and probably using credit cards and some other different you know, financial tools are gonna be in there. There's also like PayPal working capital, all those different kind of things there, but that would probably be the next item. The third is to basically court more traditional forms of financing. So for example, angel investors, venture capitalists, um, those kinds of options. There's also alternative finance, which I specialize in. So for example, equity crowdfunding using regulation crowdfunding of the Jobs Act. Um, if you're doing a really big raise, you might be doing like a Reg A plus raise or it might be more traditional reg, reg D raise, um, but I talk a lot about Reg CF or regulation crowdfunding on this channel, the way that's transforming America and also so many different other nations out there so that anyone can invest in your startup company online. It's like Kickstarter, but for equity. And you can also use other forms of crowdfunding, for example, rewards-based crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo. There's so many different options, but you can look more into that if you're interested. My final message for you here is that if you are listening to this and you're like, you know, I think GoFundMe is probably the best option. Um, one, again, the lowest hanging fruit is to download my course or to go and check out my book, Crowdfunding Personal Expenses. It's a great read. I try to keep it very structured, kind of like a blueprint, if you will, so you can go and check that out in the links down below. Um, in addition, if you wanna reach out directly to me, I do do one-on-one -on -one individual coaching. This is probably the best if, again, you're really serious about this thing, um, you've thought a little bit about it, I'm gonna be asking you a lot of different questions, introducing you to resources you probably have never heard of before. So it does help if you're just a little bit read up. We've watched a couple of my videos so that you know what you're talking about. We can have a you know productive conversation there. And I also do work with particular projects if I think there's a lot um, that I can do to help with that specific project. And it's also some different things there. I don't work with a lot of people, but it is also an option we can talk about. So if that's something you're interested in, go and check out my one-on-one -on -one coaching down below. You can also go to the link crowdcrux.com slash coaching. That's C crowdcrux.com slash coaching and you can learn more there. I hope that you got a lot of value out of this video, at least that it answered and made things more clear and demystified this a little bit for you. Again, my name is Salvador Rigman. I love putting out videos like this. If you did enjoy this, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below for some encouragement. Come subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you next time.